this is Mrs. Reichelt and this next video we're going to be talking about cell physiology. So specifically we'll be going through all the different types of passive transport and the different types of active transport. Uh, so membrane transport is the movement of substances into and out of the cell. Um, there are two basic ways that this transport occurs. Um, it can occur through passive transport or active transport. Passive transport is when you have no ATP or no energy required and then active transport is when ATP or energy is required. All right, so let's get through a little bit of vocab before we move on. Uh, a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more components. Uh, a solvent is the dissolving medium, typically water when we're talking about the body. Uh, so water is the universal solvent, so it's the thing that um, dissolves something. The solute are the components that are in smaller quantities within the solution. So this is going to be what is dissolved or the dissolvee and then the solvent is the dissolver. Inter um, intracellular fluid is composed of the nucleoplasm and cytosol. So for example, this is going to be gases, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nutrients, and other salts. Interstitial fluid is going to be fluid on the exterior of the cell. So this will bathe the cell in amino acids, uh, sugars, fatty acids, vitamins, hormones, those types of things. Selective permeability is when some things are able to move through the lipid bilayer while some things aren't able to move. So permeability will influence movement both into and out of a cell. Passive transport, again, is no ATP required. An example of passive transport is diffusion. Particles tend to move or distribute themselves evenly within a solution. Movement, then, is from areas of high concentration to low concentration. So if we were to drop a tablet of dye into a glass of water, it would move from area of high concentration eventually to area of low concentration. So it will evenly distribute itself uh, throughout the, the material. Uh, sometimes diffusion is said to go with the concentration gradient. Or it moves down a concentration gradient. So that's another way that you can um, talk about diffusion as well. So simple diffusion is an unassisted process. Solutes are lipid soluble, so that means that they're able to move directly through the phospholipid bilayer. Materials must be small enough to pass through the membrane pores, so they have to be small enough to actually pass through the phospholipid bilayer. And molecules can be assisted by a membrane carrier or they can cross by themselves. Um, and examples or examples of these are going to be fats, fat soluble vi vitamins and those types of things. Osmosis is another type of diffusion. Osmosis is when you have um, water, which water molecules are polar. Polar again means that they're going to have slightly positive and negative sides, the polarity. So water can easily move across the plasma membrane through aquaporins. Aquaporins are specific channel proteins that are through the phospholipid bilayer. And let's go ahead and talk a little bit about tonicity. Tonicity can be a little bit confusing 
especially because tonicity, you always have to think about what's happening inside of the cell and what's happening outside of the cell. So if we have a container of water and we have a cell submerged in that water, let's say the solution or the concentration outside of the cell is 0.5 molar. And let's say the concentration inside of the cell is also 0.5 molar. That would mean that materials are able to move in and out of the cell. So water or the fluid can move into or out of a cell. This would represent an isotonic solution. You could also say that the solution is isotonic to the cell, or you could say the cell is isotonic to the solution. Let's do another example here. Let's say now we still have our water, and we'll have our cell in here as well. Now let's say that inside of the cell, our concentration is 0.8 molar and outside of the cell is 0.2 molar. Now molecules or water molecules are going to flood into the cell. Okay, So think of it as water is going to follow more of the material. Basically, it'll, the movement of water is going to try to even out each of the substances inside and outside of the cell. So what will happen if you put a whole bunch of water inside of a cell? It could burst or lice. Okay, so in this example, this is when we're going to have a a hypertonic cell, or we could say that we have a hypotonic solution. So see how I can use both of these terms, hypertonic and hypotonic, in the same example? The cell is hypertonic to the solution. The solution is hypotonic to the cell. So you're always going to use these terms in relation to one another. Uh, so let me erase this. Well, actually, we'll keep it. Um, okay, so our next example then. So now we still have another cell. Now let's say inside of the cell is 0.2 molar and the outside of the cell is 0.8 molar. So now water is going to move out of the cell. If water was to move out of a cell, what would happen to it? It'll get smaller or maybe shrivel up, uh, anything like that. So now we can say that the cell is hypotonic. So we have a hypotonic cell in comparison to the solution. Or we can say that our solution is hypertonic. Tonicity can be a little bit confusing because you're using hypertonic and hypotonic within relation to each other. So isotonic is pretty easy because that's when you're in equilibrium. Water can freely move in and out. Hypertonic cells versus hypotonic solution means that material is going to flood into the cell, which is the opposite of the hypotonic cell or the hypertonic solution. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about some different types of facilitated diffusion. Sometimes substances are required um, to be carried across using a protein transports lipid insoluble or large substances. So uh, regular diffusion is going to occur through really small or 
insoluble materials, however, or lipid soluble materials, however, facilitated diffusion can occur with lipid insoluble materials. Glucose is one of the most common that undergoes facilitated diffusion. And there are two forms of facilitated diffusion. You have carrier mediated diffusion. Carrier mediated means if you have a molecule that hooks on to another molecule and then it actually will go through, let me draw this out really quick. Okay, so carrier mediated means that if this purple one can be carried through. Now all of a sudden this other one can pass through the membrane with the help of the purple one. Okay, this other one, channel mediated, this is a little bit differently put together. So we have our phospholipid bilayer and then we have our channel what happens here is molecules can move through the channel through facilitated diffusion. Filtration is when water and other solutes are forced through a membrane by fluid or hydrostatic pressure. Great example of this is going to be blood. The reason blood is a good example is because your heart is constantly pushing or forcing blood throughout your arteries, um, arterioles, veins, venules, all those sorts of things, um, and eventually will be travel back through veins. Um, so blood is an example of filtration. It's important to know that with filtration, a pressure gradient must exist. So solute containing fluid will be pushed through areas of high pressure, to low pressure areas and this is not a selective process. Active transport is going to require ATP. Substances are then going to be transported using ATP that aren't able to pass by diffusion or facilitated diffusion or filtration for that matter. So substance may not be able to dissolve in the fat core of the membrane. Substances may have to move against a concentration gradient. Let's talk about that really quick. Against a concentration gradient. This means that molecules in diffusion, so we're talking about diffusion, they're going to move from areas of high concentration to low concentration. Active transport are going to move materials from a low concentration to a high concentration. So it's going to be the opposite. You're going to use ATP for that transport. Okay, so the different types of active transport. First one is solute pumping. Amino acids, sugars, and ions can be transported by protein carriers called solute pumps. This is very similar to facilitated diffusion, however, um, ATP is required. ATP then energizes the protein carriers, and in most cases, substances are moved against concentration gradients. So again, this is going from low concentration to high concentration. A sodium, sodium potassium pump can simultaneously carry sodium ions out of the cell while carrying potassium ions into the cell. This is necessary for the transmission of nerve impulses and ATP is required. Okay, so the next type of active transport is vesicular transport. We have exocytosis. Exo hopefully reminds you of exit. Whoops, I'm spelling things wrong again. Okay, exocytosis moves materials out of the cell. Material is then carried in a membranous vesicle. Vesicles migrate to the plasma membrane. The vesicle combines with the plasma membrane and materials emptied outside of the cell. Really, the most important thing to remember about exocytosis is materials are exiting the cell. Endocytosis, on the other hand, is when substances are engulfed or they're going into the cell. There are two types of 
um, endocytosis. The first is phagocytosis, which is cellular eating. That means that they're engulfing larger molecules. And then pinocytosis is cellular drinking, or it, you're engulfing small molecules. And that's going to wrap up our um, cell physiology.